Hello and welcome to Cisco Router Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of accelerated training for IT pros. This time we're doing backing up and restoring configs from the command line. It's based on Chapter 4 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco Router Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. Book is not required for the lesson, but if you'd like to follow along, it is available from Amazon and through other resellers in both paperback and Kindle editions. The software that I'm using is Cisco iOS version 15.1, but the procedures that I'm going to show you have been around for a long, long time, and so pretty much any version of the Cisco iOS should work with these procedures. Prerequisites for this lesson, you'll just need unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco router. Equipment software requirements. One Cisco router. I'm using a Cisco model 1941, but again, the procedures I'm going to show you have been around for a long time, so I'm going to say any Cisco iOS-based router should work. You'll also need a computer for your management workstation, console cable, terminal emulation software such as PuTTY. Also, as part of this lesson, I'm going to use a terminal emulation software called TerraTerm uh, for reasons that I'll get into when we do the lesson. And you'll also need TFTP server software. I recommend TFTPD32. Here's the network diagram for the lesson. Pretty simple diagram, but if you'd like to download a copy so that you can print one out and follow along, it's available from the books website, which is at www.soundtraining.net slash cisco-router-book. It's available for you to download for free if you'd like, if that's helpful for you. Now, when we work in backing up our software in the command line interface on a Cisco router, we have a couple of options. One is to capture text in PuTTY or some type of terminal emulation software. The other one is to send the configuration to a TFTP server. Honestly, it's easier to use a TFTP server, but there may be times where you don't have one available for you or for whatever reason, and so I'll show you how to capture the text in PuTTY and to do a backup that way. Here's a summary of the steps to capture text. You'll enable logging in PuTTY. Then you'll disable terminal paging. You'll display the configuration file. You'll clean up the log file and resave it. Pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and do the demo. First thing we need to do is move into privilege mode since we're going to be showing the configuration. So let's go ahead and type EN to move into privilege mode, short for enable. Put in the password. And now we're in privilege mode. Now, before we do anything else, let's disable terminal paging. And the reason we do that is because if we don't do it, then every 20 lines the router will stop, present us with a more prompt, and we'll have to press the spacebar to go on. And then later on we'd have to come back and clean that up in the text file. So we don't want to do that. So we'll do terminal length 0. Now let's go up to the PuTTY configuration window. So we'll click on the little icon here. And we're going to go to change settings. I'm going to click on logging and I'm going to choose printable output. We'll click on browse to select the location for the log file. And I've already set it up to go to the TFTP root in the root of my C drive, but you could send it wherever you want to. I'm going to give it a descriptive name. So I like names like something like uh, 20121024. That's today's date. And then maybe an underscore and we'll say Seattle router underscore config. And then um, if you want to make it a little easier for you to read later on, you can put an extension on it. So we'll say .txt. We'll click on Save. Click on Apply. And now PuTTY is logging everything that comes out of the terminal window. So let's do the command Show Run. And it cycles through the entire running configuration. Now let's go back up to the PuTTY settings. Go to Logging once again. Turn it off. Click on Apply. And now let's also reset the terminal length uh, for future purposes just so that we, we can see one page at a time of text if we show the running config or, or any of the other configs. So we'll do terminal length 20. Let me just show you what I was talking about. Let's do the show run command now. Show run. And now see how at the bottom it says more. So it's prompting us. It'll only show one page at a time. I'll touch uh, Q to break out of that. And now let's go take a look at the file that we saved. So here you can see the file that we saved. It's in the directory tftp underscore root that we uh, mentioned earlier. And let's go double click on it so you can see what it looks like. So we'll open it up in Notepad. And there's some garbage at the top. It gives you information about the log and it shows where I executed the show run command. And we don't want that in there because if we try to 
enter that into the router configuration window, it's going to throw off errors. So let's get rid of that. We'll just go all the way down to the first exclamation mark, which is just, that's the way you comment these uh, configuration files. Now let's go to the very bottom of the file, so control end, and let's remove the prompt there. So now we've got it nice and clean. We'll resave it. And let me show you how to reapply it into the terminal window. So I'm going to select all with a control A. And now I'm going to use control C to copy that to the clipboard. Now, putty has been causing some problems recently. And I'm not sure why. This is uh, fairly new behavior for it. Uh, where I, I try to apply the configuration in the putty window and it freezes. So just as an alternative, I'm going to show you this using TerraTerm. Normally putty is a great program, but I've read of some issues with putty with uh, the serial connection causing some problems. So we're going to use TerraTerm. So I'll close out putty. And let's open up TerraTerm. Now as you can see, TerraTerm as a bit of a different interface and without going through all the details of configuring we just need to come here and say serial port is how we want to connect and we're going to choose uh, COM7 we'll click on OK and let's bring it back down into the window so we can see it and expand it a little bit make it a little easier for you to follow I'm going to hit the enter key and you can see it just looks like a pretty standard terminal window I need to go into configuration mode so I'm going to type configure terminal abbreviate it with conf T and now I'm going to simply right click in the terminal window because I've already got all of the text from the configuration file that I backed up saved to the clipboard and in order to paste it into the window I simply right click and it's going to prompt me with what I'm going to about to paste We'll click OK and there you can see it goes on into the window these are a little unusual procedures I, I hope you don't ever have to do this but it's handy to know that you can do this without even having a network connection this is all done through a serial console cable now let's close TerraTerm and we'll go back to working with putty now let's go over how to use a TFTP server to uh, back up and restore a configuration and this is really a whole lot easier than what we did with the uh, previous example so all you have to do is install and start a TFTP server the one I'm going to use is TFTP D64 which is just the 64-bit version of TFTP D32 we'll copy the desired configuration to the TFTP server and then we can take a look at it and we can copy it back into the router if we want to so let's do the demo Okay, a couple of things to do before we get started. One is we've got to make sure that the TFTP server is running. Now I happen to know that it is running, so we'll go ahead and bring it up so you can see it. We need to make a couple of adjustments. One, notice that it's showing the current directory is the TFTP program files directory. Well, that's not what we want. We want it for many reasons in a different location. So we're going to put it in our TFTP server root. We'll click on Browse, and let's go to the C drive on my management workstation. We'll scroll down. Oops, need to get past that, past the program files, to the TFTP underscore root. We'll click on OK. Notice that it changes the current directory in the TFTP server window. And the other thing that can trip you up sometimes is that the server interface has to be set to the interface that is connected to the router. Uh, this one, if you'll recall, the map is connected to 192.168.101 network, so we just need to change that. And now it should be ready to work. Let's give it a try. So we're in the router interface, we're in, in privilege mode, and we're going to issue the com command copy system colon running dash config. Then that's the source, now the destination, tftp colon whack whack 192.168.101.2. This is the address of the tftp server, and then we're going to specify the name, so we'll just say something like test router underscore config dot txt. Now you'll notice that that there was a shift of the text there and what happened if you'll take a look at the far left side of the prompt there's a dollar sign following the prompt that just simply means that that the text was truncated so that it wouldn't scroll off the screen but it's all still there the command will still work as we expect it so let's go ahead and hit enter it prompts us for the address or name of the remote host that's the one that we entered earlier and that's again the address of the tftp server the destination file name will just confirm by hitting enter and it copies it across. Now let's take a look at it. 
So this is the folder that we specified earlier that is the TFTP root. You can see the configuration file that we backed up from the previous portion of the lesson. And here is the configuration file that we backed up just now, testrouter underscore config.txt. Let's take a look at it. So we'll double click on it and open it up. And there you can see, now it's not very nicely formatted, but the router would be fine with this. If you want to make it prettier, if you want to see it in a, in a better light, then open it with WordPad instead of Notepad. Um, and let's do that just so you can see what I'm talking about. Right-click, open with, WordPad, and there it is. And you can see it's nicely formatted, and there's none of the extraneous garbage that was in the uh, the the text that we captured from Putty. So really, this is this is a better way of doing it. Uh, I showed you the the way of doing it with Putty and TerraTerm because sometimes you know in the field and you don't know what you're going to encounter, you might have to be able to do that. It's nice to know, but but most of the time you're going to back up and restore your configurations using TFTP. Now, if I want to restore it, like I just mentioned, here's what I do. Let's go ahead and close this out, and we'll close this out as well. Just for grins, let's change the name of the, the router. So go into configuration mode and change the host name to Don's router. And now you can see the prompt is different. Let's copy the text now from the TFTP server. So I'm going to go back into privilege mode, out of global configuration mode. We're going to do copy from TFTP colon whack whack 192.168.101.2 slash test router underscore config dot txt. Remember that's the same name that we gave it earlier. And now we're going to copy it into the running config. You could also copy it to the startup config if you wanted to, but we'll do it this way. Watch what happens to the prompt now. And you can see that it says it was successful. Watch what happens when, when the prompt comes back. And there you can see it's back to test router. So really pretty slick way of, of backup and restoring configurations. In our next video, we'll show you how to do it in the GUI, in the Cisco Configuration Professional. That's not always available, so it's nice to be able to do it in the command line. If you'd like more information, please visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. If you'd like more videos, visit our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like the companion book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco Router Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide, it's available in our bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for you. For SoundTraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.